Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. And in this tutorial, we are going to see the various processes involved in a data warehouse. So in the previous lecture, we have seen the delivery process of a data warehouse. So in this lecture, we are going to see what are the different processes involved in a data warehouse, their significance with some simple examples. So without further ado, let's get into it. So in the data warehouse, we have a fixed number of operations to be applied on an operational database and we have well defined techniques to use a normalized data to keep the tables small etc. So these techniques are suitable for delivering a solution. But in case of decision support systems, we do not know what query and operation which needs to be executed in future. So therefore the techniques applied on the operational database are not suitable for the data warehouse as the data warehouse should evolve as the business grows. So in this tutorial, we will discuss how to build the data warehousing solutions on open system technologies like Unix and relational databases. So in data warehouse, there are four major processes. So the first one is extract and load the data. Next one is cleaning and transforming the data. Then the backup and archiving the data and managing the queries and directing them to the appropriate data sources. So these are the major processes which we will see in detail. So our first process is extracting, loading the data. So the data extractions takes the data from the source systems and load it to the data warehouse. So the data load takes the extracted data and loads it into the data warehouse. So you have to remember one thing. Before loading the data into data warehouse, the information extracted from the external sources must be reconstructed which will be feasible for the data warehouse to store that data. So in this, we have to consider three points clearly. The first one is controlling the process. So the controlling process involves determining when to start the data extraction and the consistency to check on the data if the data looks good. Controlling process ensures that the tools, the logic modules and the programs which are executed in correct sequence and the correct time. It is very important process. The next one is when to initiate the extract. So the data needs to be in a consistent state when it is extracted. That is nothing but the data warehouse should represent a single consistent version of the information to the user. So for example, in a financial data warehouse which stores the financial data such as general ledger, account payable and account receivable, it is very illogical to merge the consolidated data when the quarterly reports are being generated. So this would mean that the latest data will not be refreshed as per the user's requirements. And the next point you have to consider is loading the data. So after extracting the data, it is loaded into a temporary data store where it is cleaned up and made it consistent. So the consistency checks are executed only when all the data sources have been loaded into the temporary data store. So this is our first process which is extract and loading. Our next process is cleaning and transforming the data. So once the data is extracted and loaded into the temporary data store, it is time to perform the cleaning and transforming the data. So here you can see the list of the steps which is involved in the cleaning and transforming stage. So the first one is clean and transform the loaded data into a structure. So the cleaning and transforming helps to speed up the queries. So it can be done by making the data consistent. So the transforming involves converting the source data into a structure. So structuring the data increases the query performance and decreases the operational cost. So the data contained in a data warehouse must be transformed to support the performance requirements and control the ongoing operational cost. So it is very crucial. The next step is partitioning the data. So it will optimize the hardware performance and simplify the management of data warehouse. So here we partition each fact table into a multiple separate partitions. So what it will do that the huge table which contains the billions of record will be partitioned so that the queries will take shorter time for the quick analysis and lower operational cost. And it will also optimize the hardware performance 
and will avoid the long running queries over the platform. So the next step is aggregation. So the aggregation is required to speed up the common queries. So the aggregation relies on the fact that most common queries will analyze a subset or an aggregation of the detailed data. Our next process which is involved in data warehousing is backup and archiving the data. It is also very important process. So in order to recover the data in event of data loss, software failure or a hardware failure, it is very necessary to keep the regular backups. So the archiving involves removing the old data from the system in a format that allows it quickly restored whenever required. So for example, in a sales analysis data warehouse for XYZ company, it may be required to keep the data for at least four years with the latest one year of data being kept online. In these scenarios, there is often requirement to be able to do the month on month comparison for the year and the last year. So in this case, we require some data to be restored from the archive. And our last process is query management process. So this process performs these given functions. So the first one is it manages the queries. The next one is it helps to speed up the execution time of the queries. So it is very important as when you require the quick analysis over the stored data, it is very crucial that the execution time of the queries will be as low as possible. The next one is the directs the queries to their most effective data sources. The next one is it ensures that all the system sources are used in the most effective way. So it will lower the operational cost and improves the efficiency of the process. And the last one is monitors the actual query profiles. This functions involves in the query management process. So the information which is generated in this process is used by the warehouse management process to determine which aggregation to generate. So this process does not generally operate during the regular loads of the transformation into the data warehouse. So these are all the processes which are involved in a data warehouse which we have discussed in brief with some simple examples. In this case we have seen the introductory part of the processes which are involved in a data warehouse, the processes which are extract and load process, clean and transform process, backing up and archiving the data and the query management process. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. Thanks for watching.